Ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to you. Welcome back to Singapore Management University's Ivory Keys 2020 Long Awaited Part 2 of our online production From Struggle to Victory. My name is Caitlin Kwok from SMU Broadcast and Entertainment, and I will be your host for today. Join us as we trace the events that transpired throughout the COVID-19 crisis, expound on the emotions that we faced, and look forward to the future. A little fact about our university and club. Established in 2000, SMU or Singapore Management University is home to over 10,000 students and is internationally recognized for its world-class research and distinguished teaching. SMU Ivory Keys is a piano ensemble club that unites students with the passion for music, regardless of genre. Just like before, this fundraiser concert aims to raise funds for the SMU Resilience Fund, which expects more students to be affected by the long-term repercussions of COVID-19 and seeks to alleviate the high stress levels and anxiety confronted by the students through providing financial aid. To support this cause, please visit the link in the description and make your donations today. It is April 21st, exactly midway through the circuit breaker. We were all looking forward to resuming normalcy at the end of two more weeks. However, we soon learned that the circuit breaker will be extended for an additional four weeks. Do we really need so long to recover? Are we losing the fight? Sergei Prokofiev's suggestion Diabolic, Opus 4, Number 4, that you have just heard perfectly encapsulates the fear in our hearts. Resigned were we to being confined in our homes for our safety for another six weeks. 
The next four pieces depict the various emotions that we went through in the next six weeks as we continued to play our part to get the outbreak under control. The first two bring to mind reminisce and worry. In Schubert's impromptu Opus 90, number three, a single melodic line carries sweetly and gently above a continuously flowing triplet figuration. Occasionally, it grows, swells, and ebbs in intensity, reflecting our worry as we grappled with continued restrictions to our lifestyles. Following that is Chopin's Mazaka, Opus 17, number four in A minor, composed while he was a refugee in France. The Mazaka clearly conveys his yearning to return home. He recollects his happier past, as did we reminisce about simple pleasures that we enjoyed outside our homes with our friends and family.
The next two pieces focus on those of us who have lost our loved ones to the virus, evoking grief and anguish. Mozart's Sonata in A minor, K310, first movement, was composed in 1778, around the time of his mother's death. His grief is evident in the constant turbulence in this piece. Following that is the 10th piece of Tchaikovsky's The Seasons, Opus 37A, October. The English translation of the poetic epigraph by Tulso that accompanies this piece reads, Autumn, our poor garden is all falling down. The yellow leaves are flying in the wind. This script, combined with the beautiful singing melody of this piece, conveys anguish and sorrow of suffering and regret of what once was but no longer is.
uh, so when I first heard that PM Lee extended the circuit breaker like by six weeks, I sort of expected it uh, because the virus situation wasn't really getting any better. But I guess after the news sunk in, I, I felt a bit sad because like yeah, I had plans to to go out with friends or to even to do other stuff uh, like some part-time jobs. But I, but I it was just ruined by the announcement. But I think aside from that, it also gave me the circuit breaker also gave me an opportunity to um discover myself more and focus on things that I wouldn't normally have the time to do, such as such as really practicing the piano more and participating in in event in events with my CCA, which is Ivory Keys. Yeah. I I'm a person who is generally okay with solitude and so I, I found it quite a refreshing change uh, from the usual from the usual summers and that and that yeah that I just had time to reflect on reflect on life and pursue hobbies that I otherwise would not have been able to pursue. How about you? Yeah that's true. I also had a lot of time to reflect uh, but that was because I was like quite bored because I was doing my part time job. So I was working at a supermarket and there were generally very few customers there. So all I did there was open plastic bags and like put there and wait for customers to come. So I had a lot of time to think about stuff. But at the same time, it's also the feeling of listlessness, which mm. was where I got my inspiration for this piece that I chose, which is October by Tchaikovsky. And yeah, it, it gives the sense of um, like there's nothing to do. There, there's just nothing actually. It's yeah. just a blank hit. Yeah. I think it's been pretty interesting, like the range of responses to the extension of the circuit breaker. Some have indicated that they feel bored and a sense of ennui and blankness, particularly since so many commitments have been cancelled. And some have indicated stress and worry because of the uncertainty looming ahead in the future. But personally, I thought that the circuit breaker could also be a good time to reflect, to take a rest, and to slow down. Like for instance, I was finally able to get back into practicing and participating in this concert, which was a very fulfilling experience for me. In addition, I also attended some virtual internships where I met some very inspiring mentors and made new friends along the way. So I found that Perhaps having a positive mindset through the circuit mm. breaker yeah. is something that is very important. And the struggle is very mental, it's real and it's mental. Mm. But perhaps one can overcome it through adopting a positive mindset and reframing. As we approached the end of the circuit breaker, our excitement of returning outside was muted by the new restrictions put in place. Gradual reopening of workplaces by sector limits on outside gatherings, social distancing at communal food areas. Will we ever be able to adapt to this new normal? The next piece, Fantasia number no. three in D minor by Mozart, starts off somber and grim, reflecting our apprehension at entering this new post-circuit breaker world. The mournful tone transits into a merrier section, hinting at the hopeful possibilities that awaited us.
from the role-playing game Final Fantasy X, a story about love and loss. Nobuo Uematsu's ending theme plays at the end of the game, following the sacrifice of the main hero for the world. Beginning soft and delicate, the piece grows with conviction with each passing bar. This is an anthem for those who are no longer with us, who have lost their lives against the virus, and for us who remain. That we will carry on with the memories of those who have gone close to our hearts.
Today, the circuit breaker has been lifted and Singapore is gradually reopening in phases. We keep our eyes set on the future to the day we can proclaim with pride that we have finally overcome this crisis. Pride and might, struggle and victory are all evident in the next nationalistic dance, Chopin's Polonaise in A-flat major, Opus 53, Heroic, which tells a story of how a great nation faced down and triumphed over its trials and tribulations.
of our trip through time. The last piece of our concert from struggle to victory is Debussy's Reflections in the Water. The first of Debussy's image, the piece depicts the stillness of calm water, the turbulence of a moving stream, and the light that bounces off the water surface. It ends delicately, drawing our tumultuous program to a peaceful end. <laughs> Thank you. 
So Brian, how have online classes been for you so far? Well, I mean, I, I don't really have much to compare to because I started uni in online classes. But if I were to compare to my classes before, I would say online classes make it a bit, a bit hard to make friends. Uh. Mm. But a bit, yeah, and a bit hard to form study groups. But, but we make do with what we can. And uh, sometimes, I mean, the, well, the one plus point about online classes is you get to watch recorded lectures. Like. Yeah, definitely. So you can watch, you can revise the content, makes it easier. Uh, what, what about you? I think for me, it's about the same, but uh, I think we have managed to know some of our co classmates a bit better already since we've met them before. Mm. But I think it, it's the same few points that it's harder to maintain engaged with the lecturer. It's harder to like just know the people around you as how you work in a physical setting. Mm. Yeah, so and I think some people, they, they, find it, they, they find that they cannot be as attentive Oh yeah, and then online setting as compared to being physically there. Well. Yeah, three hours of Zoom is. Yeah, there's a pleasure of like being called out anytime. Oh. Or like, yeah, just being in the classroom setting motivates you to like study harder for some. Huh? How cool. about you, Polly? I find that online classes has made it much easier in terms of travel time. So actually, I take about forty five minutes to get to school. Yeah, so I think in terms of travel time, that is safe. But definitely, there won't be as much you know, fun as having physical classes. Mm, yeah. I think there's the element that's still missing. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, and but I still get to meet you guys online. So yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I mean, that's the same for CC as well, right? Yeah. I mean, like doing everything online now, like having an online concert. Yes. But I think how has the experience been for yourself? I think it's definitely not as enriching as a live concert. Actually, mm. I do miss our physical concerts. I think we recently had one at the Esplanade in the, at the beginning yeah, of this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, actually I was hoping that, you know, we can look forward to future physical concerts. Yeah, yeah. how about you, Brian? Uh, I, I, performing online uh, to a camera and performing live is, of course, it's a very different experience. Huh? And I mean, watching someone perform online and watching someone perform live is, of course, it's, it's even more different for the audience. So. I mean, once once we can have physical concerts once again, I think it's going to be a it's a win win for everyone, and that that's one thing we're all looking forward to. The SMU Resilience Fund supports SMU undergraduate and postgraduate students hard hit by the COVID nineteen pandemic by providing financial aid. This is the fund that this fundraiser concert is raising funds for. To support this cause please visit the link in the description and make your donation today. With that, we have come to the end of our concert. We hope that you have all enjoyed this odyssey from struggle to victory with us. We would like to thank the National Youth Council and the Young Changemakers for powering our project. In partnership with NYC, we aim to drive communal healing by sparking conversations through music. We would like to also thank Ms. Janice Lowe from the Office of Student Life, our club manager, and Ms. Yong, our instructor, who have both been instrumental in assisting us with our concert today. If you would like to receive updates on our future productions and events, do follow SMU Ivory Keys on Facebook and Instagram. We hope that everyone will continue to remain strong and stay safe as we prevail through this crisis. With that, my name is Caitlin Kwok from SMU Broadcast and Entertainment. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>